Idy ho, good neighbors, and welcome to Hobo's Hollow, episode one. Or what I should say is my episode one. This is a co-venture for anybody that didn't see the announcement between me and my friend Aiden, who has a new YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to him yet or watched his first episode, links to his playlist and his channel will be down in the description of this video. And also, after this video is over, you'll see my end screen pop up. And over on the right side, you'll see his channel icon. You can click on that to go over and subscribe to him. And you'll also see in the upper left-hand corner of that screen, my channel icon. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do do us a favor and go over and subscribe to us both. It's always much appreciated. All right, so let's get on with the episode. It is a rainy, kind of overcast day. The sky looks kind of blue, but yet we have some rain. We have some rain. We have some rain. And uh, what's on the list to do today? Well, a couple of things. I have to go over to field one, show you on the map. Where is it? I'll show you on the map. So here we are. So we're down here. I'm going to come up over here. This is my big field of grass. If you watched my announcement video, you'll see I was running around in there. Um, so I have bales on the field over here and I want to collect those up. There's two different size bales over there because <laughs> I uh, mistakenly didn't look at the settings when I started the baler and um, I wound up making um, a size larger than I originally wanted. So um, yeah, so I have to collect all those up and then I'm going to bring them down over there through the gate to my wrapping station and I'm going to begin uh, wrapping those up so we can get them fermented and off to market because we're going to attempt to make this a profitable farm. But before I do that, um, another thing I would like to do is I would like to make a little lean-to shed over here to house my little Jeep uh, because I'm usually going to have the top off. So on rainy days like this, I'd like to have it under cover. It's just the kind of guy that I am, so it doesn't rust. And uh, of course, so you don't sit you behind in a puddle of water when you get in to commute up to the field. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But the first thing I want to do is we'll go ahead and take the top off of it. I know it's a strange day to be taking the top off of the Jeep in the pouring rain, but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll customize and uh, let's see, cover. There we go. Can we have the, just the windshield? No, it's either with windshield and cover or without. That's cool. So this is a nice little Jeep and it has no errors. It's right off the mod hub. That doesn't guarantee that it'll have errors, but, or not have errors, I should say. All right, so how, I got to get rid of this license plate mod. I thought it was the greatest thing, um, <laughs> but uh, it's turned out to be a pain in the neck because if you don't do something with the license plate, then it won't make the sale. We'll just put no plate. So Aiden, when you get the, uh, the save file back, uh, you're going to see the license plate mod missing, but I'm going to experiment first. When I remove it from the folder, I want to make sure it doesn't uh, mess up, you know, anything. Okay, so let me just put this here for now. Yeah, see, I like open cab tractors and open cab vehicles and stuff. You just get to see more. So this is... Uh, the area that I was thinking of doing this. So just so you know, if you're new to Farming Simulator 22 and you don't do the terrain editing very much, Q will rotate you counterclockwise and E will rotate your screen clockwise. Now, W is forward and S is backwards and then D and A are respective side to side. But now if you push down like a click button push down on your mouse wheel and hold it you can then if you push forward you'll rotate down and if you push pull back you'll rotate 
uh, top down. And then of course, if you scroll the mouse wheel, uh, you can uh, zoom in and zoom out. So let's get a little better orientation here. And hopefully I won't have to remove this tree because um, I like it there. But I would like to remove some of this. So let's see, landscaping and let's see painting so let's just put in some uh regular mud for now just so we can kind of see what's going on i'm going to push v on my keyboard to change it from a square reticle and then letter m to make it bigger we'll just say m for magnify and then paint this out and we'll go right about to there i can paint back in whatever i decide uh and Let's see, go hit the letter N as in Nancy. We'll go down lower and we'll just paint in a little bit of gravel and we'll refine this as we go along, but just a little bit of something there. Okay, good. Now let's go into buildings. There's these little tin roofed, roofed sheds. Let's see, this one, would this one fit over that thing? Now, if you want to rotate an object, you hold down your right mouse button and then you can turn it left and right and rotate it. But that'll be plenty big. And now I'm going to rotate upwards and zoom out just so I can see, make sure that it's kind of sort of straight. Let's try that. And there we go. Looking good. Okay. So back to construction and we'll go back to our uh, painting, landscaping and painting. And now I can work on uh, just getting some of the, uh, the brush back in here a little bit. Get some tree leaves going in here. Push V. I wish it would remember where I default. You know, if I leave it at circle, uh, then it would stay that way, but it don't. So let's see. If we went around this way and then out this way. And then right around here, maybe. Here we go. Let's walk that path and see what we got. Yeah, looks pretty darn good. If I may say so myself, you may have a different opinion, but that's okay. All right, let's drive it. Plenty big and you can even put other stuff beside it. So Aiden, if you have something that you wanna roll in here, something that needs to be a pull through, you can always move the Jeep over a bit to the left and put something in here. So next on the list, let's go up to the field. So we can go to the right and go around that way. Or we can go around this way. This is probably the long way, but that's all right. There we go. There's our path. Getting a little overgrown. Oh, you know what? Had to start the time going. <laughs> you notice how the sky changed? Now we have clouds and rain. <laughs> when you freeze time, the weather advances, but the, the sky doesn't seem to always change. And another thing I want to do, I'm going to hit my F12 button and I'm going to turn on my super strength just in case. There we go. Now, I don't want to park on the field, do I? I know there's probably some of you are already saying, shame, 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 Atomic. You shouldn't be this, uh, field is a crop so you shouldn't really be driving on it so I'll park my vehicle over here and then maybe at the end of the day my wife will be kind enough to um, ride up with me on the tractor and uh, 
take the Jeep home for me. All right. So now I have to figure out how many of these bales are the 5,000 and how many of the 6,000, but I'm not gonna just walk around and do it. Um, I think the majority of them down this way are 6,000s and then there's a few 5,000s over there. So, so I'll start off uh, with a little bit of the uh, outside cab driving and then uh, I'm gonna do some inside cab even though it's an open cab, but uh, that's how I usually prefer to do it. But I know everybody has different tastes. So let's go ahead and start to pick up our 6,000 bales. And I'm not going to be doing the whole field. Oh, isn't that interesting? I have not had that happen yet. What's going on here? F1. Uh, operating position. Okay, that's a new bug. Let's see if I do unload bale. Okay. And then hit Y again. So that should be nothing now. And then I'll hit, uh, I probably did something. Hit Y to reset. Now, this shouldn't be active now. I should have to hit operating position. Let's see. Okay, so let's hit operating position again. And that is the letter B. Okay. It must have been a funny little glitch, that's all. Unless reducing the menu jumbles it up, I don't know. So I should probably start down this way. Or actually I should go the furthest. And then work my way in, shouldn't I? That would be common sense. <laughs> yeah. Common sense is overrated. <laughs> the more you know, the more that's expected of you. <laughs> so, the last time I talked with all of you, that was back in, I want to say July, June or July. I'll have to look at the date on that episode. Time escapes me. Um, and I had told you that after the video, I was on my way uh, to a, a weekend in Arizona. Go, go, gadget, super strength. <laughs> Get that bail out of there. Get over there. Yeah, so I had said that we were going away for uh, a long weekend in Arizona. Well, my wife had uh, received a job opportunity, a job offer for her dream job. So being that it was a much more attractive opportunity uh, than she currently had in uh, Nevada, I wanted her to take it because if you can go to work every day and actually be happy about it and enjoy what you're doing, that's a blessing. Not everybody has that luxury. So uh, she's always supported me in all of my endeavors and ideas and crazy things. And she's never, she never asks for anything. She really doesn't. So of course the answer is, you know, let's do it. The problem was that she had to be there in late August to uh, set everything up for this uh, place that she's working because it was kind of like a newish um, opportunity, something that they're just starting up. Anyway, the race was on. We had to go down and um, find a, another place to, to live, another home to buy. And uh, boy, what a nightmare did that turn out to be. Very stressful. <laughs> All in total, we've made two round trips down to Arizona. And for me being, you know, that I have this back condition, um, for those of you who don't know, I, I broke seven discs in my back many years ago. Uh, that's the short of it. So long car rides are very difficult for me, uh, whether I'm driving or not. And that is a like mm, six to seven hour drive, especially if you factor in some stops and some traffic. And then all the driving around we had to do once we were down there because we had to go looking you know, we had to maximize our time while we were there. So we would go down on a Friday evening and then Saturday and Sunday, we would spend the entire days looking at homes with our uh, realtor. So yeah, we really pounded the pavement and we looked in an area in Arizona, Southern Arizona called Sun City and it's their 55 and over communities and they're absolutely massive. The only 
well, not the only problem, but there's a lot of issues with Sun City. Um, the homes are very old in the original side of Sun City, Sun City East, I guess you would say. And then Sun City West, the homes are in the late 70s to the 90s. When you're looking at homes in a senior living community, a lot of the people there are elderly. And a lot of them live on rather limited budgets. So they may not keep up with things as they should because they might not have the money. So a lot of the homes had problems. We found one that looked absolutely lovely and uh, we put an offer in on it and they accepted. It was through a, a house flipping company um, called Open Door, I think it is. And um, I would not sell or buy to them. There's nightmare stories and um, they lie, beg, cheat, borrow and steal. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was smart enough because I knew because the, the place was so old, the house we bid on was remodeled, but it was built in 1962. So I already knew from my contractor's background that that home more than likely had clay sewer pipe going to the street. So when we had the home inspector do the, the home inspection, I also paid extra to have him run a camera scope down the sewer line to the street to make sure that the pipe was in good condition and everything was in working order and it wasn't so basically i spent an extra four or five hundred dollars on the fee for that but we saved many thousands of dollars because before we even moved in they would have had to dig up the front yard and replace the sewer line from the house to the street and if we didn't things would have gotten caught up in there and pretty much you would have had exploding toilets in the house so <laughs> No, thank you. So we wound up canceling that deal and it took them many, many, many months and they wound up having to reduce the price of the house by many tens of thousands of dollars to get it sold. They took a loss, like a $40,000 loss, but um, that's kind of open doors MO. They went around, they bought many hundreds of properties around the Las Vegas area that weren't selling. They, they would overpay and then they'd sit. And I think what they're trying to do is they were trying to raise the market price of neighborhoods, key target neighborhoods. So there's always a motive. When you think they're doing something foolish, they might not be. So we set out to look at some other homes in Sun City and they were nightmares for one reason or another. And then I was told, because I walked into one, there was big giant cockroaches in there. Like I'm talking, you know, the size of very large beetles. <laughs> And they're saying, well, that's common out here. Just keep a cover over your garbage disposal in the sink. And that's where they come up and that'll take care of it. Baloney. I don't believe that for a minute. And I'm glad I didn't because the, the condo that we own now, there is no sign of any cockroaches whatsoever. And uh, yeah, so no thanks. Not believe in that. And I won't put up with that. You know, if there's cockroaches like that, then you need to spray. That's the problem. Because in Sun City, the homeowners associations, it's like a group, small groups of people in a certain area of the neighborhood, little sectors, they all just get together and have their own little associations. And then you pay fees to these people. To me, that sounds real shady and honestly ludicrous. And things are not being kept up. Yeah, so it was a nightmare. And we had a come to Jesus moment you know after the second time we went down there for the second weekend and we turned up empty-handed we pulled into the parking lot of this Marriott Hotel because my wife decided she wanted to drive from Sun City down to where she worked and see what the commute was because we knew it was going to be long but we we really need to see just how long you know have it sink in physically so it was 50 to 55 minute commute you might as well just say an hour especially going home being that she's working 10 hour shifts so she's got almost an hour commute to get into work and then coming home in rush hour it's going to be even longer i told her i said you're looking at another what 15 years of work i said i can't imagine you keeping up that pace for another 15 years and we're down to one car we sold off our other car because we uh, got a great price for it uh, through Carvana. Uh, so we sold the car 
I mean, the car had over 100,000 miles on it, a uh, little Subaru Impreza, and uh, they gave us $13,000, <laughs> so a lot more money than I expected, so yeah, come on over and get it. Anyway, I said, not only is it going to be hard on you, I said, but we're going to run the one vehicle we have into the ground, and on days when I need the car, that means I have to drive you 55 minutes an hour out and then turn around and drive home an hour and then an hour to come back and get you and then an hour back home. I said, no way. Four hours a day and all that gasoline. I said, that's ridiculous. So we wound up um, looking at a listing we kind of put aside and um, we bought a, a place uh, built in the early 2000s, totally remodeled. It's very nice. Uh, I will do a, a video tour of it if you would like and show you what we have here but uh, it turned out to be the best decision and my wife literally has an under 10 minute commute to work so it's heaven and if i want to have the car for the day i can bring her into work and uh you know there's my favorite coffee shop right around the corner from there i can sit and have my iced coffee and uh enjoy the morning sun, and then go do some errands or whatever it is that I want to do. Now, why is it saying there's another 6,000 there, is there? Yeah, these look like the big boys. All right, so what size do I have here? All right, so this is 6,000, so that means, yes, we do indeed have the 5,000s up there. So I guess there's no more 5,000s. And I'm going to run this over again, right? Just like I did last time, stupid. <laughs> So to make a long story longer, we wound up purchasing this place. And, um, you know, it's expensive. You know, because the market, you know, was quite inflated at the time. And we didn't have the luxury of time. It's since starting to drop down. Interest rates are going up. So home prices are going down. Which is bad for us. Because we're the person or the couple that purchased our home in Las Vegas... It was on the market a week, and we got a, an offer, $10,000 over asking. And one thing led to another, and after being held up almost a month, the mortgage company told them that they couldn't approve their loan. And the reason was because they took a loan through a program called FHA, Federal Housing Act, and there has to be a certain amount of funds placed in reserve by the condo association. And the requirement for FHA is the condo association has to show that they're putting 10% into reserves. And uh, because of the recent new water laws in the desert states down here, the association had to spend money to pull out all the grass that was in there and put down some fake grass. And then, of course, you know, desert landscaping rocks and all that jazz. So, of course, that time, that month, when this loan was trying to be approved for these poor people, the condo association only contributed 8% into the coffers. So they said that the loan was denied and they had to back out. And in the meantime, when they had sent their inspector to our home to inspect everything, the place passed with flying colors. No sooner, and I, I kid you not, no joking, no sooner did the inspector drive away the air conditioning, the bearings in the engine of our air conditioner seized up. Now, I could have been a jerk, about it all and i could have just told the new owners hey you know what inspector passed it it's on you but i believe in karma and uh what comes around goes around and i just i just couldn't do that so it costs us almost fourteen thousand dollars we replaced the whole heating and cooling system and uh, so they had a beautiful brand new heating and cooling system and ductwork. they had a gorgeous modern wi-fi thermostat better off than i am right now <laughs> And then the, they were they were disappointed to tears. Um, they had told our agent that they were out, you know, looking at furniture because they were sure that this was all going to go through. And then that one little niggle caught everybody off guard. And now our home is sitting, and we've cut the price quite a bit, and we probably won't even have a chance of selling it until the until the spring. We'll see what happens, but uh, it's going to be a while. Because, uh, like I said, right now, under the current administration in this country, um, the interest rates are still continuing to rise. 
people are holding off and they're waiting to see what the November election is going to do to the balance of power in our Senate and Congress and uh, see if uh, uh, get the Fed to reduce those interest rates again. But yeah, so that's what we've been up to. And then the whole stress of, you know, having to, everything had to be done in a hurry. We had to hire movers and we had to get things packed up and ready and uh, get down here and then unpack and settle in down here. So it's been one heck of a ride all the way around. Okay, so let's see, I'll park the Jeep over here for now. I'm kind of thinking that the videos probably run on longer than I expected anyway. So I think I'm gonna stop it here. And in the next video, I'll wrap a few of these bales up, but I'm not gonna do a whole lot of wrapping. I'll do most of it off cam. We'll wrap up just a few in the next video and then we'll move on to another job. I don't wanna drag, you know, bale wrapping out for several episodes because who wants to see that? All right, so until we meet again, take great care of yourself. And I hope you're doing well. See you again soon. Bye for now. Goodbye, hurting someone. Goodbye, hurting someone.